You're now listening to the Zod and Drea podcast. Welcome back, everyone. Yeah, yeah. Once again, we're here. How was your weekend, everyone? Hope yours was good, man. Once again, I was on the trail running. I said, so I was, was I. Oh, yeah, you were. I <laughs> you. Yeah, Drea was with me. We were over in San Jose running, uh, doing another half marathon to add to the collection because, you know, that's what we say. You got to do things together as a couple. You know, you might as well get healthy at the same time. We did it. We survived it. Weather was beautiful. Weather was gorgeous. Good friends. Shout out to Katie Bessier and shout out to Allison Drew. Hello, ladies. Thank you guys so much for the hospitality. Hospitality, hosting, taking us around town and just showing us around San Jose, California. So shout out to you guys. And we'll be back in NorCal soon. Oh, God, I got to go back. (laughs) Yeah, because we're going to see. I'm going to see. Hey, you may have thought I dissed you, but I did not because I had no idea you're up there. So shout out to Naomi Thompson. Naomi, I'm going to come over there just to see you specifically. All right. Both of us. Can't wait for it. All I'm right. a big fan of NorCal, so we're going to have a good time. We're going to have a good time. So what's on the agenda? Well, for the agenda today, we got an exciting show. Oh, like yeah. always. Always. So we're going to first talk about in our entertainment section, Luke Cage. Yeah, we got to talk about Luke. I am addicted. We, I'm on. tired because I've been binging on yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, we're on episode eight now, so don't don't give us any spoilers. Please don't. Please don't. Probably by the end of the evening tonight, we'll be done. Yeah, we're probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet you. And then on the relationship part, we're going to talk about... When you uh, are seeking out somebody, Mm -hmm. are you looking for sex or are you really looking for a relationship? Yeah, stop lying. Yeah, just be clear. Be true. We know what you want. And then for our big section of our conversation today, we're going to bring up then the topic of do interracial relationships strengthen or weaken American culture? Yeah. And we we have a guest today. We got a guest. My man Ian is going to be here to talk about that. Yes, yes. And he just came back from China, so I know he's going to have a lot to say, you know? Yeah, really going to put Americans on blast on how we just view that and how the... Just how we're viewed on, on a cultural scale. Yeah, so he's going to add a little bit to that, so we can't wait to hear uh, his opinions on that, because I know I definitely got opinions on and that. And I definitely got opinions on that, too. All right, all right, good. <laughs> so we got a lot to talk about and a lot to cram in for this section. So, again, we're excited to be on, and, again, we're excited to have you guys listen. No doubt, no doubt. So you ready to get into Let's it? Let's do this. All right, all right. So you want to start this off? Luke Cage. We're talking about Luke. What? What's up with the black man? Bulletproof. First of all, best soundtrack, best musical score. I mean, the best, best music. Yeah, they got a lot of good music and they got a lot of good featured guests that we've seen so far. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not going to give away the story or anything, but we're just talking about this Netflix show called Luke Cage. Give some background about it. All right, a little bit of the background is if you haven't been watching on some of these Netflix Marvel shows, the Marvel, obviously, and the comic book and the whole nine yards, um, if, you, if you've been just underground somewhere not watching anything that's been going on in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, well, a lot of this connects to that, as well as some of the things on ABC. You know, they had Agent Carter, they got Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Well, now we have on Netflix, we have an unadulterated version of those shows, which are a lot more adult, a lot more violent, but they can do a lot more and have a, you know more liberty. Mm-hmm. Um, Hollywood style to get into. So first we had Daredevil, mm, which is great. Daredevil was incredible, and we're not talking about that bullshit Ben Affleck crap. You know, we're talking about some real shit. Charlie, whatever his name is, Charlie Roundhead, dude. What? You, You're making fun of the Benefer red suit onesie? Anyway, yeah, that shit, <laughs> leather outfit. Who's fighting crime in leather? <laughs> Who? Anyway. Um, then, you know, connecting that, we have to also connect to the next series, which was uh, Jessica Jones. Mm-hmm. And um, that's where Luke Cage intertwines into there. Rosario Dawson uh, shows up on all three of them. So she's the connecting factor to all three of the shows. So two of the shows wind up in Hell's Kitchen. But Luke Cage is different because it's in Harlem. And so, uh, in case you haven't been, you know, when I was a kid, I used to just, I used to love Luke Cage. You know, back then it was Power Man. So anybody who knows... You know, Power Man back in the day, I used to sneak into my brother's room, read his comic books, and, you know, there's his brother just kicking ass with his yellow shirt and 
tight ass jeans and his metal around his head and I'm like yo this dude I want to dress like him thank god I didn't but you know that shit was really yeah. dope and I really like what I was saying and for a viewer like myself who is not familiar at all with any of the backstories any about Power Man but saw then Daredevil saw Jessica Jones to see this character come out and just stand on his own and come out in this really awesome story of a true reflection of a community and being honest about it like the writing is fantastic yeah the writing's a lot of fun the characters are a lot of fun um and what's funny is they have really really minor marvel characters in there um like miss yeah, misty knight and yeah I mean, you know, some people that you're gonna probably have to do some research on but it still doesn't take away or you know deflect from the main storyline which is you know number one the brother luke does not like to be called nigger i love that i love on a global scale they have a show where they they say the word but here's this guy who's so powerful he can do whatever he wants he's like don't call me that and he's like yo do you see yourself as that you know you got to be big and like i love Mm -hmm. that i also love the background that they say on some of these names i mean i mentioned it in my um zod report yesterday but you know like percy sutton and they talk about Big L and Crispus Attucks, you know, Langston Hughes and Zora Neale Hurston. You know, some of these people, um, especially that go back into the Harlem Renaissance. Right. And there's questions that I bring up then because mm-hmm. there's names that come up that I ask you, like, I don't know who that person is. Yeah. And I have no problem hitting pause <laughs> and be like, this is the history that they don't teach in the United States school system. So, remember what they were saying. Uh, there were some tweets going on um, with some white people who were saying that Luke Cage is so black. Like, they just couldn't take it. It's so black. It's like, you know, if you had studied a little bit of history or if you had actually gained one or two black friends, it wouldn't be so black to you. You know, you mm-hmm. didn't complain about, what's that, the, the Big Bang Theory? You didn't, you didn't complain, complain about, about that. Seinfeld. You didn't complain about Friends. No. No, you didn't complain about Golden Girls. But then all hey, of a sudden... Golden Girls, that's my show. No, Golden, Gold, Golden Girls is shit. <laughs> Same with Will and Grace, but shit, tell me the black people in that show. There's maybe one Thank or you. two guest appearances, right, right. You no, know, but then they see Luke Cage, big brother man coming through, black cast, Alfre Woodard, you know, brother man who's, who's <laughs> how about a dude who's always in Mr. Robot and, and you know, that, oh, that yeah, dude. Oh, yeah, that one and, character. And get down that one cat and, uh, you know, the other dude, Remy mm-hmm. from, uh, I'm loving on. a little bit of the, the ethnic mix, too. Uh, in the neighborhood she, she, she loves it she, she, I love it uh, Sonia Braga uh, for Sonia those Braga. she's a fantastic actress she's on the show she's on there and Rosario then of course Dawson. Dawson. So, um, oh we, yeah we had a couple of the dude who plays Chico yeah, uh, yeah. so we got some Latino um, I think even that guy Shades might even have I don't know he might be just the white dude <laughs> the token white dude yeah, he's the token white dude <laughs> but anyway check it out if you got Netflix make sure you check out some Luke Cage hope we didn't give you any spoilers and we didn't okay good <laughs> alright uh, yeah. now What's We're going to talk about relationships. Now, come on. Come on. Like, what's up? So, look. What's up? This is from what I observed lately. All right. With just in general, with people and all kinds of relationships. You wonder why. Why are there so much drama? Why is there so much confusion going on in relationships in early beginning of the stage? Mm-hmm. You know, there's this seems to be in a lot of relationships that I know that, uh, that um, either people we know that are in or from what we can see on social media, that there's this type of of miscommunication going on. And I always wonder, does it have to do, and I brought this up to a few people too, the the whole issue about sex. Mm -hmm. Were you clear when you first started this seeking out somebody that one, did you want sex and it just to be sex? Or two, did you really want a relationship? Yep. You know, and I think if you're clear about that in the beginning, then it really alleviates a lot of the drama and confusion. The whole conversation of, oh, where is this going? Oh, what are we going to do in maybe two or three months? Well, if you're just there to have a casual physical relationship, then if you're both clear about it, then you know about it. But if you're really seeking out somebody to have a Long-term relationship is the person you want to snuggle with. This is the person you want to cook with. This is the person you want mom and dad to meet. Then, why are you afraid to bring that out in the beginning? Well, here's the crazy thing. It's like, you know, me, I would just straight up say, like, this was my rep. It's like, look, do you want to have sex or, you know, what's up? Like, that. that's basically it because I wasn't ready for a relationship at that point. So they had a choice on whether or not they wanted to sleep with me and that was it, be a friend with benefit, mm-hmm. or, you know, leave. 
you know, there's plenty of people out there. You know, what's it, 7.1 billion people, something like Like, you know, you're not going to miss me, so, you know, get over that. So it didn't make any sense for me to beat around the bush for what I wanted, mm -hmm. for what I wanted, and if that's what they wanted. But I think a lot of them would wind up doing what I think many people do out there, which is, well, you know what, I'm going to give it up to them because eventually they're going to love it so much that they're going to want a relationship with me. And I see that a lot with women, mm -hmm. women who try and fall into that trap. It's like, you know, instead of just being honest, like, no, you know, I'd rather save myself from marriage or I know I'm looking for the one. Cool. I, I can appreciate that. I'm not trying to, you know, get into it that bad. Like, please. But, you know, just as a sexual activity, sure, that would be fun. But if it's going to be um, something where you're going to connect uh, your emotions to it when it should just be something that is physical, mm -hmm. then there's going to be problems. There's going to be problems. So honesty up front is exactly what I want in a scenario like that. And I, I don't know if society is making it difficult for women to truly be honest about what they want. Could be. You know, I know for myself that you're, women of a certain age or just in, you know, if you're over 21, really, and you're dating, you have to be so many things for so many people sometimes. You've got to, one, be uh, successful. You've got to be intelligent. You've got to show that you can handle yourself in a boardroom or in whatever place because you want to climb up a ladder. But at the second time, you you also have to be nurturing. You have to show that you're womanly and motherly and sexy, but not too sexy because you don't want to give off the wrong things. So there's a fine line, really, of what the heck we can be. So then to express ourselves that when we want to date, yes, do you really want to date? And if you want to date somebody because you do want to see about establishing a relationship, I've heard from women that they get then... Um, feedback from men saying, no, 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 I don't want to hear that you want to be married in two years and you want to have kids. I just want to just have a drink with you and that's it. Well, for some women, that is just a little difficult to take. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I mean, for myself, when I was dating, I know as I had to be really clear what I wanted, you know, so I knew what I wanted. I knew what I wanted to, to have around in my life. And there were times when I would tell guy, no, cause you just, you just, you just stupid well, and you need to go <laughs> look, sometimes it's too clear because if you ever want to have fun you got to search on online dating uh profiles the craziest thing i think i ever seen is you know what are you looking for me i was just like hey you know friends and then in my profile i would say oh you know because i just want to see what it can develop into or dating not serious yet because i want to see what it can develop into and you know we're just going to date but the ones that would always scare the crap out of me were the ones that said i'm looking for someone to marry like, okay, let's just skip steps <laughs> one through five and let, let's just get down. The, oh, you scary son of a bitch. But then they're being honest. Wait, they're being honest, yeah. but they're also being scary. You know what? Everybody who dates, normally that's probably on their list. Please listen Exactly. Please Be honest about it. Result. Fuck yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> We're coming back with Ian. Once again, make sure you listen to the Zod and Drea podcast by subscribing to one of the following podcast methods, iTunes, Google Play, or YouTube. Visit our website at www.zodandrea.com to go directly to the links, or if you choose, you can listen to each podcast episode directly on the website under their individual posts. Want to get involved and have your voice heard on the next podcast? Then be sure to tune in to the question of the week on our website, Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram page. And dial in and leave a message on our voicemail at 323-963-4221. If you're an advertiser who would like to have your 30-second or one-minute placement on our podcast or YouTube episode, please contact us at info at zodandrea.com and we'll send you a price list. Space is limited for each episode. The next podcast might even have you as a featured guest. Tune in, check us out, and get involved. And we are back. Oh, whoa. Right, right. <laughs> Just making whoa. sure you guys yeah, are awake. Guys. <laughs> so we're going to talk about today. Do interrela interracial relationships strengthen or weaken American culture? And we have our guest today, Ian. Hey, what's up, everybody? Yeah, what's, what's up, up, man? <laughs> and we're going to pick on some of his expertise and some of his... Uh, opinions about this topic so for all of those that can't see us or haven't seen any of our videos oh right there you see the camera <laughs> but again for those that maybe haven't okay. before um i'm mexican-american mm -hmm. and zod is i'm black so that's why this topic for us was very important and it's something i guess for me 
it is just, it is our way of life. And I think it adds so much to our relationship is we're both proud of our cultures. We're both proud of where we came from. We're both proud of our families, our heritage, um, our ancestors, and we share that constantly. All right. All right. But don't forget, this is my man, Ian. And Ian is a black American. Right. You were raised here in Phoenix, right? Oh, yeah. I yeah. was raised in Phoenix. Raised in Phoenix. So we're talking about an Arizona resident. But man, this brother can also speak fluent, what is it, Mandarin, right? Yeah, Mandarin. Mandarin. He just came back from China. So his, his like, perception and his perspective is going to be a little different. Because you just came back after, what, four years? Yeah, four years. Man. <laughs> like, think about that. Four years in China. Communist China. He was in there. In the trenches. So... What were you doing there? I was teaching English. Yeah, I was an English teacher over there for four years. And there's so many adventures, so many stories out there. It's a great place. So, yeah, believe it. Yeah. And so, I mean, you know, not to get personal, but we're going to get personal. I mean, you, you you had a couple of ladies out there, right? Yeah, I had a few. Yeah, had a few, you know what I mean? You know, you got to get out there and represent America, you know? He made America great again. Um, so, <laughs> 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 you know, so why you're making America great out there. You know, did you find that in China it was any different in the cultural um, of interracial relationships uh, than it would be over here? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, and China is really conservative. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it depends on the on the people, of course. Like, they do have more liberal people out there. But on a whole, the society is really conservative. People are uh, much more closed off from, you know, the rest of the world. So a lot of people, like... A lot of girls that I meet, they would say my parents wouldn't be um, accepting of, you know, having a black boyfriend. Of course. You know, or maybe not even black, but a non-Chinese boyfriend. Even white? Um, For some, I would say even white, even though there are a lot of uh, uh, white and Asian couples out in China. Right. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. yeah. Because it's funny, um, you know, you see a lot of the first generation Chinese out here in the, you know, in the States, you know, hanging out in Chinatown or whatever, you know, over in New York, you see a lot of them, you know, they're first generation. San Francisco. San Francisco, mm-hmm. um, you know, they're pretty much all over, pretty, you know, on the coasts of the United States. And, you know, I would always find that, you know, the second generation was way more accepting. You know, they were mm-hmm. already ingrained in the American culture. So they would go in and, um, you know, against their parents' wishes because their parents were usually telling them, you know what, yo, you chill out, you know, don't bring that Negro home, you know, don't <laughs> bring this. But um, I would see a lot of, like, Asian with um, white guys, like Asian women, white guys. That, that combination, I don't know if the Vietnam War had something to do with it, uh, but, you know, they call it yellow fever. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, which is a <laughs> derogatory term, but, you know, that's what they call it, where, you know, it's going to wind up being uh, usually a white guy. I mean, there are a lot of black guys, too. I mean, we got the whole Wu-Tang Clan. Um, <laughs> you know, we got the, oh, I'm sure they've had a few Asian women in the day. Um, but, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting to see a really conservative view and, you know, how they don't want to, I guess what they would view it is, is I guess what, weakening the culture, weakening their own culture by bringing someone else in? Yeah, that's, you hit the nail on the head right there. Yeah, um, they would say that you want to keep China, like, Chinese. So <laughs> when, you, when you have a bunch of, they don't want, they're really proud of Chinese culture. Yeah. And very proud of Chinese culture, which is great. But um, at the same time, it's like, well, let's keep these other influences out because right. we want to keep China, China, you know, for China, like Chinese. Mm-hmm. They're, making, yeah, you know. they're making China great again. And the same <laughs> thing. It's funny. When I went off to France, um, this was years ago, but I remember France, at, that, at least at that point when I was hanging out in France, they made sure that they had to play a certain amount of French songs because American songs were so popular, it was almost like consuming the French culture that they had to make sure that they, you know, kept their culture. So it's funny to see these outside groups doing similar things that you wonder what America thinks. Now, considering that they're more monolithic than we are, mm-hmm. um, and, you know, we're supposed to be a melting pot um, as much as the law tries its best to <laughs> not let it be. Uh, it's we it's kind of cool to see the differences between those and what we are. So it's like I mean, do interracial relationships here strengthen and weaken American culture? And um, like, did you know that movie's coming out? I don't know if you know that movie. Um, so in 1967, um, Loving versus Virginia, 
um, that's when it ratified, like, now you're now allowed to, you know, an invalidated old law is prohibiting um, interracial marriage. So that's only 67. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's funny. And again, it's based on a true story, this movie, right? It's, yeah, mm-hmm. oh, the, yeah. And it's based on that case. And it's funny that it's called Loving, considering, you know, it's a black woman, a white man, and it's about love. But, you know, them marrying got them thrown in jail for a year. It's like, just... And when you think of that, it's like, okay, you know, it's like, oh, 67. For the millennials, they may be like, oh, my God, that's so far... But it's like, that's one year after my brother was born. My oldest brother was born. Like, that's crazy to me that that was, it was in this country, it was outlawed. Mm -hmm. You know, segregation was the thing, separate by race. And, you know, you wonder if certain people believe that it weakened America. You know, it made a weaker America by, you know, mixing our genes. You know, how can you mix those genes with the Negroid and, you know. <laughs> so would you say then the groups that then emerged from that type of mindset would be then your your extremist groups, like your white supremacy groups or your, your, your um, Aryan nation groups that to keep, they think, America pure, which again, there's no such thing as a pure American. <laughs> is, unless you're native. Yeah, and then you have every <laughs> right to kick everybody out. <laughs> right. Well, and just... Um, just to get this straight, interrelation, inter, uh, interracial relationships have been going on in America for a, a long time. Forever. Just Since America, the beginning. Forever. Right. Like, there is there is no way that you can stop, you know, two people from getting together. Like, that's, right? That's been going on. It's been going on. Just the fact that getting married being illegal, that's surprising. Mm-hmm. It's, like, it's funny. The same thing with gay people. Gay people have been hanging out <laughs> since the beginning of time. Mm-hmm. You know, and they've been in the military since the beginning of the military, you know. It's just when people finally come out and they're like, you know what, I'm not hiding anymore. Then all of a sudden it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Mm -hmm. You guys make me uncomfortable. And how dare you ask for rights? Yeah, you know, how do you, how dare you? You you make me a little uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to have to stop that, Mm -hmm. you know, for my own ego. I mean, it's crazy that American culture does that. Um, There was funny, there's this article I saw talking about um, the Asian and white thing and these are the funny things that uh, they actually said. It's um, from Thought Catalog. I think it's .com. But they said that why they loved, why they believed that Asian women would love white men. And what was their response? Well, there were five reasons. One was they are tall. Which is kind of weird to me because aren't there sections in Asia like where, you know, Yao Ming was from that where these mugs are like six, seven feet. I mean, these are some tall people. Well, there are a lot of tall, <laughs> lanky, basketball playing. Yes. Right. There are a lot. So Asia, there are a lot of people in Asia. So you can find tall, short, right. you know. So two billion skinny. people. I think you're going to find yeah, probably right. some people There's that are, be that some are over 5'2". Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, another one, they are assertive. So they find, you know, the white men, you know, assertive. You know, they they go after what they want. You know, while I was over there, a lot of Chinese people, when I was in China, they were really assertive, almost to the point of being aggressive. Like, wow. making a sale, you know, just in mm-hmm. talking to you. Almost pushy. Like, really pushy. Interesting. So. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess it depends on the perspective. And it pre- depends know. on the person, too. Yeah. You know, this, is, this, is, this isn't me. This is thought catalog, just in case you're saying. Then number three, they are cultured. You know, the white men in America, you know, they're, they're cultured. You know, that's... I'm like, what is Who that? Who did this survey? I don't, this is <laughs> thought catalog. Go blame them. This is why I had to talk about it, because it was ridiculous. Um, you know, this is why they're saying, which is, you know, why would this make any country greater than... But it's, it's funny. It's almost like you're saying that they believe they're weak. And these other people make them stronger. Mm-hmm. You know, they're cultured. Like, culture is everything. Well, you know what I think it is? is Hollywood does such a good job of branding, like, the value of whiteness. Yes. So when people, especially, like, when you take into account China, a lot of people in China, all they know about America is Hollywood. Mm-hmm. So right, So every yes. perception that they get about, you know, uh, white men or white women, it's all from Hollywood. So they're thinking that every white guy is like a Tom Cruise. Right. Or, you know what I mean? Or That's Hugh true. Or, that's true, you know? I mean, the influence of Hollywood on the world, and I think they know it, right. such as, like, the movie, like, uh, Jones and the Free State and some of these other whatever, you know, where, you know, the white man is the hero, and, you know, he's, he's Anybody so that is of any ethnic group is supposed to be the supporting cast. Yeah. It's supposed to, be, you know, help the white man like, get I'll through. Help him, because, he, you know, without him, I won't be free. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you're right, you know, I guess it does perpetuate that type of a stereotype where... Mm-hmm. You know, who's not going to be attracted to that if that's what you see? You right. know, it's like. 
And you know what's crazy is that a lot of a lot of people when I went over to China, a lot of them didn't believe that I was American. Even knowing that, you know, Obama's the president, knowing Kobe, they could name more NBA players over there than I could, but it, But no, you you're American, you're black. You can't be American. You gotta be from Africa somewhere, but like think about that. He was like the unicorn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like like you can't be like that only exists on my TV. Like uh, I was a rare Pokemon. You're a rare Pokemon boy. <laughs> Your was worth at least two million points. There was a big crowd following you everywhere yeah, you went. Yeah, right. One time I went on the metro and I was wearing like this outfit. I promise you. At least 100 to 150 people all had their cell phones pointed at me. Oh, my God. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, I should have taken a picture because it was like, this is the closest I'll, I ever want to feel to being a celebrity. A celebrity. Oh, my gosh. Man, I got to go over there. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Just on some ego stroking shit. Uh, they might think you're Jordan. <laughs> <They're> probably right. <laughs> or Luke Cage, if I can get it right. <laughs> That's why it's important for, you know, shows like Luke Cage where you have, uh, you know, a lot of different minorities represented in it. Mm -hmm. So people can see the truth that, you know, America is not just, you know, a bunch of white guys in suits Mm who are rich and money. It's not, that's not it. Like, it's diverse. It's It's very diverse. A lot of Latinos. I mean, we, we got everything. Latino, Asian, black, white. Come on. So then you bring up a good point about, again, the power of the media, power of Hollywood. So then do you think having interracial couples more frequently in shows, in movies, then could really show an example to other parts of the world that this can happen and it's okay? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because mm-hmm. the media is, does such a good job of brainwashing people. Yeah. Especially when, like in China, they're not going to come over to a lot of them aren't going to come over to China and actually see for themselves, you know, what's going on. Mm-hmm. So they take from, you know, different TV shows that are popular, different movies, and they see, oh, well, this is how it is in Hollywood, so this <laughs> must be how it must is be in okay. real life. Mm-hmm. Right? This is how it is. So, yeah, definitely portraying more interrelation, or interracial uh, relationships. Definitely could only do more to educate people on how it really is. Mm-hmm. Cause yeah. That's how it is in America. Yeah, that's how it is. Yeah. And like you said, I mean, God, you remember you were just watching American Horror Story. Mm-hmm. And you remember the interracial relationship that happened? What was that in season two? Season two. Yeah, because it was Asylum. It was Asylum. You mm-hmm. remember the, and how they were, you know, discriminated against and whatever. And, uh, you know, for me, I've dated everything. Latina, white, black. Asian. I mean, I had everything under the sun. Be like, whatever, because you know, I just looked at the soul of who it is. You know, it doesn't matter. And I also became very attracted to the culture, mm-hmm. to their culture, their foods, the languages. I mean, that sucked me in like crazy. You know, with you, it's the same thing. You know, you're always talking like, Latina, like it's funny. When <laughs> she starts hanging out with all the Latina people. Like, she starts speaking all this Spanish. I'm like. I mean, she gets really amped up, and I love that. To me, that is what makes America great. Mm-hmm. You know, that is what it is. So interrelation, yeah, interracial relationships, for me, I think it strengthens it because it also does knock down a lot of stereotypes, but it merges cultures. Mm-hmm. Like, how can you not, how can you hate on somebody who has the culture of this and that? Right. Like, how can you hate on that? Oh, wait, you're black and you speak Chinese? You know, like, if you wound up, like, if you wound up having an Asian kid or something, like, Who's going to hate on that kid? Like, mm-hmm. who's going to hate on you for, like, following your heart instead of what other people do is, uh, you know, follow their eyes? Like, one thing I like to do is I try to look at relationships like a blind man. Yeah. Like, if I can. I like, if I can see it like that, I think everybody would be good. Mm-hmm. And how, well, then how do you duplicate that type of mindset then to others? Because there's so many people that don't think like you. <laughs> That's a hard question. Education, traveling, and get a passport. <laughs> but that's about it though yo Ian thanks a lot Thank man for you. coming through my pleasure it's been a pleasure Thank oh, you man. so much wow that was great that was good that was good <laughs> you know peace to my man Ian for doing that and uh, coming in and representing um, speaking up on the topic I know it's never uh, that easy especially on camera but um, you know he represented. Yeah, and thank you for the honesty too, because this is this is what we're about. We want to have honest conversations. Yep, yep. And so you know, as usual, where can they find us? Everywhere. Such as where? Such as Instagram. Right. Facebook. Right. Subscribe to us uh, also on iTunes. Yep, iTunes. Mm-hmm. We are available. Google, Google, Google Play. Plus. Google, Google Play, Google sorry. Google Play. <laughs> Google Plus. Google. We are on Snapchat, Google Plus. Snapchat. And also keep an eye out for our own individual 
uh, postings that we'll have on Snapchat too, which are the Zod Report and then and the Dreya Report. Report. Yeah, so check us out there, and we will see you soon. Bye. 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 